explaining the historical activity data tab. So this is one of our paid features. What this shows us is uh, historical data. What we first see here are the different volatility skews that have traded in the past. So starting here, we can go ahead and uh, pick out a day of interest. So let's say we look at September 16th, for example. So this will take all the trade data for, from September 16th. And when we're, what we're looking at here on the SKUs, we're gonna, we're gonna see in pink the trade-weighted implied volatility. And in blue, we see the amount of premium that has traded behind each strike. So basically the way that this volatility is weighted is that larger trades, more premium, has a higher weight than uh, low premium trades. So something that trades you know, a one lot way off market will have very little weight. Something that had a lot of size to it will have more weight. And then we back out that, that weighted average implied ball. So we can see how all these different SKUs have traded on September 16th. Scrolling down here, we have the same sort of concept with the historical term structure. So go ahead and pick out any day. Let's say we want to go to September 7th. We can see the trade weighted implied vol here in pink. We can see the amount of premium that traded behind each expiration in gray. And then we can see the forward volatility uh, that's derived from this term structure. Over here, we have the activity pie chart. So you can pick out a day. So let's say right now we're looking at uh, September 2nd. We can see the total activity in terms of contracts, whether that's calls bought, calls sold, put spots, put sold. We can also look at it in terms of premium. Scrolling down here some more, we have a volume chart. So I can go ahead and pick out any date range. Right now I'm looking at year to date volume. Um, I have a bunch of different filters. So let's say I wanna look at uh, buy side only, sell side only, or you know total combined volume where the aggressors are both buyers and sellers, excuse me, sellers. And then I have this days until expiration filter. So right now I'm looking at total volume for Bitcoin contracts. But let's say I want to look only at short dated options. So something that has 38 days or less, I can go ahead and use this days until expiration filter to um, isolate those options. And now I can see the volume for those options. In blue, we have the amount of block trades that occurred that day. Um, and then in pink, these are, will be non-block trades. Scrolling down here some more, we have the put call ratio, which coincides with all these filters. So this is the put call ratio for options that traded that had less than 38 days till expiration. So we can see, for example, as of recent, uh, you know, the put activity has increased and the call activity has diminished, so on and so forth. Scrolling down here some more, this is our specific option open interest tool. So this is kind of one of my favorite tools personally. So you can go ahead and pick out an expiration of interest. So let's say we wanna look at uh, December 25th expiration. We wanna look at the, basically the $10,000 call. So this should be a very popular option. We can pick out the, uh, basically the time frame I wanna look at. So let's say I wanna look at the past three months. So what this will show me is that on the left hand side here, we can see the open interest uh, over the past three months, how that's ticked up or down. Um, and then you can also see here, they're kind of small, so if you want to see uh, kind of a, a, a bigger range, you can go to five days, you could see the, the actual trading volume. So in white, that will be contract sold volume, and then in blue, that will be contract spot volume. And some days you have blue and white, so that's you know a combination of, of both sides of the market that traded. Um, so when I pick out five days, basically what this will show me here on the right is over these past five days, uh, what has been a distribution of implied volatilities that have traded. So most of the time this contract has traded at 58 vol. And then 58 vol uh, in pink here is going to be contract spot. And then in blue is going to be contract sold. So the highest vol in the past five days was someone was selling 62. And lowest vol was someone who was also selling 57. And you can go ahead and expand that. So let's say I want to see one month. Now I can see over the past month, the total range of implied volatility that, have, that has traded. Here over on the upper right hand side, we have uh, basically the net aggressors. So right now I'm selecting one month. So basically this, what this is doing is it's tallying up all the buys minus all the sells. So there's 148.5 contracts that have been bought, net bought. So uh, 148 more than have been sold. And then since inception, there's 424 that have been net bought. 
If you go to like a different contract, you'll get a, a whole different picture. So let's say we look at this $36,000 call. Well, that's been net sold. So what this tells us is that the public or the retail has been a net seller of this $36,000 strike. And in distribution of vol, we can see, you know, this thing has traded as low as 97 and as high as 131 vol. So that, that's a great way to gauge uh, the, the potential price distribution and what side is the public leaning on versus market makers. Scrolling down here some more, we have uh, the shadow term structure tool. So what this will do is that unlike uh, the first historical data tools that I showed you, which were comprised of trade data, this is comprised of quote data. So right now we're looking at the current term structure here in pink. And then in blue, we have um, you know, a, a past term structure. So let's say I want to go to the term structure that we saw on September 16th at, call it, you know, 6 a.m. UTC. So this will be what, what was the, the term structure quoted, uh, quoted at uh, on September 16th at 6 a.m. versus how is the term structure quoted right now. Here on the x-axis, we have the days until expiration that each data point represents. And then on the y-axis, we have the net, uh, excuse me, the absolute value of implied vol. And then here we have a shadow term structure comparison tool. So instead of having the current term structure in pink, we can have uh, a different day in pink. So we can look at September 2nd at 1 a.m. UTC versus September 9th at 1 a.m. UTC. And now we can see how the term structures uh, compared between those two dates. Scrolling down here some more, we have something similar, but this is a shadow skew uh, uh, chart. So basically what this will do is that we can pick out an expiration. So let's say I wanna look at this D expiration. So in pink, where is the D skew quoted at right now versus some day in the past that I find interesting. So I'll call it, you know, September 22nd at uh, 5 p.m. UTC. In blue, that's what it used, that's how the skew was quoted back then. And in pink, this is how the skew is quoted right now. So you can see that vol has come down, uh, you know, five points, call it five points in the belly, whereas the wings are pretty much priced the same. So a great use to this tool is, you know, trading complex spreads. You want to get an idea uh, how your contracts uh, would perform and how this, cur this curve has been changing and shifting and you can use that to uh, help your trading like that. Here we have a tool called block trades tied up. So I can go ahead and pick out a date range to say I want to look at the past five days and what this will tell me is uh, it's in descending, pl descending block trade ID and we can see the uh, basically the block trade count which means that there's two legs to this block trade. So what we're seeing here is that someone block traded basically a 50 by 50 vertical in March. So a 7,000 call by 12,000 call uh, in March trading pretty much, you know, 64 to 65 implied vol. Uh, the difference in premium they paid or someone paid um, 200 grand for the long leg and received 75, 72 grand for the short leg. Now this buy buy and sell direction here, this is pretty much like an accounting scheme. So uh, since the trade is pre-negotiated, we don't actually know who the aggressor is, but we do know that this block trade had one leg that was a sell and it was offset by another leg that was a buy. So this direction helps us to account for uh, the different directions that this block trade uh, leg had or the different uh, directions these legs had and so on and so forth. So you can keep scrolling down and you can see all the block trades, you can paginate through all of them uh, for this five day period that you've selected. And then down here we have basically the top trades. So this is kind of what we see on the current order book tab, but it's basically the top trades in descending uh, uh, premium traded size for any given day. So pick up the day of interest and then you can use these filters, buys, sells, blocks, not blocks, liquidations versus non-liquidation trades, and you can paginate through all the trades that occurred that day.